Hi, my name is Natalie Bradley and I'm here to talk to you today about universal design. Because if you're a teacher and you have a classroom filled with different types of learners, I like to call it neurodiversity, it can feel like holding up the world when you're trying to incorporate differentiated instruction for each individual learner. The beauty of universal design is that it can stand on its own when you incorporate some basic techniques that can help all types of learners. And so we're going to cover those today. First of all, let's talk about preferred seating. Some students are highly distractible, so it is helpful if given choices of where they sit in the classroom. Some need to sit in the front to reduce distractions from others. We'll revisit this again when we talk about taking tests. Predictability and consistency is essentially important to many students. Let them know the agenda for the day, what is to be covered, what is to be expected from them, and when. Anything other than this can lead to distractibility and uneasy feelings. Now that we are all settled and comfortable, many people need extra time to process what you are saying or what you are asking of them. So it's important to present the information slowly to allow more time for this processing. Students need information presented more slowly because they need more time to process the information and they generally also need to take smaller steps. Taking one step at a time will help them to understand the concept. It's important that they don't proceed to the next step until each one is learned thoroughly. Information is taken in through the senses first eyesight, hearing, touch, and emotions. Some prefer one way or the other because these senses may be stronger or weaker depending upon how our brains operate. So it's helpful for all if you provide the information in a way that it can be heard, seen, and touched as in hands-on demonstrations. It's even better to incorporate all the senses at the same time. Incorporating all of the senses will make a bigger impression and a clearer picture in the brain. So I'm going to show you an example of hands-on tool that you can use when teaching math because math can be so abstract for students that it's difficult to understand. But when you ha have a hands-on demonstration such as this, you can show them that this is, this is a circle and then when it's broken in half, it's one half and it's written on here in a fraction form. Uh, but then, oh, it's also written in percentage and decimal as 50% and 0.5. When possible, allow the student to show you what they know in creative ways that capitalize on their strengths for expression. This could mean that a student makes a short video instead of an essay. Who knows, you might discover some hidden strengths and talents. Many students struggle with remembering, so it is important that you provide materials that can be studied and repeated until it is in the long-term memory. When possible, provide copies of notes along with pictures and even allow recordings in the classroom when appropriate. Encourage homework for review and repetition. It's also important to positively acknowledge when each step has been mastered. This recognition helps the student know that they have achieved something important and that you noticed it. That's meaningful to them and helps them with their motivation. It's also helpful if you can make it interesting and meaningful to encourage positive emotions. Feeling good helps with learning. Find out the interests of your students and try to connect the new material in some meaningful way to their lives and interests. And if you don't know, sometimes you can simply ask, how can I make this more interesting for you? Or how can I make this more meaningful? Provide as much positive reinforcement and emotional support as you possibly can. Research shows that emotional support is one of the most important factors to help students improve their learning. Encouraging statements such as, you can do this, you've got this, would be most welcome to the student returning to your classroom. And speaking of emotions, some students can be easily overwhelmed or discouraged. So allow them some time to take a break and regroup. This time out can help them return to the class more refreshed and able to focus. Tests can be very stressful for some students. It's extremely helpful to incorporate relaxation techniques such as deep breathing 
and positive visualization, especially just before a test. And for standardized tests, allowing earplugs or earmuffs for those students who can be easily distracted can be quite helpful. When discussing the test outcome, remind the student that it is not about their self-worth. It is just about how well they were able to show what they know within a certain time frame. So if they didn't do well, examine their test taking and study strategies to target areas of improvement. So as you can see, following these simple steps of universal design can help your classroom of neurodiverse students understand the material better.